Alrighty, thanks for tuning in for another Tugger Got Uncut. I'm uh, kind of trying to hurry a little bit, but not also not forget things. Um, we have a little downwind launch situation and a leaking fuel tank situation. I'll explain more of that later. But tonight's mission is to fly to the superstitions and it's a very calm evening. So I'm hoping if you guys can sit through a lengthy episode, we will have some wonderful payouts. Robbie just got the downwinder. Oops. Come on, factory. You can do it. Okie doke. Let's not <laughs> screw this up. Damn tailwind. I'm just too lazy to move all the way down to the other side. I just shuttled Casey, who is on flight number five. I shuttled her down there because I want to give her every advantage. But me, I'm stupid. I'll take a downwinder. Uh, yeah, I can feel the wind on my back. So I'm going to do a little motor assist. Someone's texting me on takeoff. Now's not the time. Ow. Fucking whacked my, uh, calf into the cage because I was running so fast. Like lightning. That'll probably be a bruise later. Okay. Jesus Christ. Dude, that windsock is straight. Downwind. Kind of retarded. Uh, okay, cool. I'm going to linger just for a minute. We have multiple different skill sets here. Robbie and myself on free rides. Casey on flight number four. I'm the Onomojo and Bell. About to take off on a spider. Dude, look at that wind. I swear is blowing straight downwind for my inflation. So Robbie and I, being more experienced, just took the downwinders. And Casey and Bell took the upwinders. Like smart people. Makes a big difference. The desert's really green. That's cool. Um, basically, the goal for today's flight is the superstitions, which are right over here. Normally, from this site, we just fly straight out, which is about eight miles to that part of the mountain, and uh, play in those cliffs. But I want to today, hopefully, work my way to the west and fly out to the westernmost point of the superstitions. Um, yeah, and uh, the hope is just that it's really calm over there and we can get all up in it. Robbie and I are on the same mission. Um, Bell and Casey. Casey's supposed to follow Bell, and if Bell uh, doesn't feel good about the conditions, then she's just gonna stick with her buddy system. Once Bell nails this takeoff, I will head towards the mountain. And the air smells like funnel cake. There was a carnival or something going on. Got it. You got it. Hell yeah. Okay, cool. Everyone's in the sky. I'm gonna head towards the mountain. Um, yeah, there's a carnival I drove past over there. And it straight up smells like funnel cakes, but that's gotta be like 10, 15 miles away. Which is wild. Um, oh. So aside from that, this whole mission would be like fine and dandy. Uh, we have 
an hour. Sorry, I'm trying to sell my motorcycle too at the same time and I'm reading messages. We have just about an hour till sunset and then I have 30 minutes after um, with my strobe. Fuel efficiency wise though, uh, I filled my tank to 12 liters, which I rarely do. And I filled it, it's sitting on the ground and Casey's like, what just stripped out of your harness? So I lift the harness, lo and behold, I'm dripping fuel. So I took apart my uh, harness and uncovered the tank. Found that there's a huge crack in my tank on like one of the manufacturing uh, lines basically. And it's at about the 10 liter mark. So I siphoned out two liters of gas so it would stop leaking. So now I'm down to like 10 liters which still should be good for two hours um, of normal casual flying. But if I need to speed bar or I want to use extra power to have some fun, then now I have to start paying attention to my fuel level because my damn tank is leaking. So that's that. actually kind of hurts ramming it into this cage uh, what do we talk about um, I've been kind of having fun making these uncut videos some of them I voiced over some of them I don't but basically I've come to the conclusion that uh, my computer can render really fast got fast internet at home so I can upload videos really fast so like these long form episodes oh look at the cow with the baby hello uh, these long form episodes are more practical now I guess and I've been kind of back on the swing of I want to save my main channel content for like higher quality stuff which right now I'm kind of waiting on that electric paramotor to arrive and then I'm going to go hard for four weeks with a giveaway on the electric paramotor and basically making high quality content on the electric paramotor. But uh, yeah, I just feel weird when I post something that's like mediocre and it's just like a, an update, a life update or something to my main channel. And I know a lot of people will just comment like, oh yeah, we love anything you post. But from my perspective, it's like, if it's just getting the average amount of views, that's good. But I want to be posting stuff that gets more than average, which is like 50 or 80,000 or 100,000 or ideally a million views. But yeah, so I've just been kind of enjoying flights like this instead of just enjoying it just for myself, filming an episode for the Uncut channel. Which, by the way, if you guys enjoy this, you should post it, share it, and then can you imagine, like, the Uncut channel starts getting tons of views in this whole time. Like, I didn't even have to try that hard with all the fancy editing on the main channel and, like, the creative ideas. I could just kind of run a podcast from the sky, which is essentially what this Uncut channel is. That would be dope. I would love that for a change of pace. Just go on my normal flights and blabber about nothing. You guys listen. My nose is kind of runny and I'm self-conscious that I'm destroying the audio every time I sniffle. More cows, more power lines. This part of the flight is going to be kind of boring. Dude, that cow looks pregnant. She's got a fat belly. Yeah, this is about eight miles to the mountain and uh, I'm going to stay low until I get close and then we'll go up to the cliffs out in the air and then start heading west. So this is going to be a long ass flight. Last night we did uh, Pikachu Peak and I only called that because for some reason Pikachu I think it's called. I feel like I always put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. But we flew that last night and that was remarkable. It was the most like mind-boggling because the bottom of the mountain was windy and the top was dead calm which normally is the opposite 
and I'm just flying right up the peak of this mountain, which is super rare. And uh, that video should be on the main channel. If you haven't seen it yet, it should be up. Oh shit! Robbie's above me. Bell and uh, Casey are back behind. I guess I should start climbing. I bet Robbie tripped out on this free ride, but I'm trying to conserve fuel as much as I can for the legs of this flight so that I have more fuel to burn later. Because my damn tank is cracked. Bullshit. He's hauling ass up there. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of paramotoring recently because all my friends are in town and they paramotor. Robbie, Casey, Bell, and Matt, the New Jersey people. And uh, I, did, I took like a, probably two weeks um, where I didn't get a base jump. And then I did one base jump um, just a couple days ago out in the mountains, which will hopefully fly past if everything goes well. Uh, and it felt so good. I love base jumping so much. And I want to do more. I want to be base jumping tonight in these epically calm conditions. But my friends are only in town for so long, and I'd rather be paramotoring when they're here, not just go out and do my own thing. But uh, what I'm trying to say is I'm really looking forward to some base jumping. There's exits over there that I've done. And there's exits all the way over to the left that uh, are jumped very frequently. That looks like the longer version of the van I had years ago. The T1N was a 2005 uh, Dodge version of the Sprinter. I do miss it, but I also don't miss it. It was good, but it had its time and place. And, uh, moved on to bigger and better things, I guess. Oh, God. There's no reason to check my fuel right now, but I'm just like, I want to keep a good track on it. It looks like we burned half a liter or three quarters of a liter. I just have this vision of, in my head of that crack extending all the way down the fuel tank, and I dump all my gas unknowingly behind me and have a massive motor out. So that was just to check that we're still retaining gas, and we are. Dude, if we get to fly around flat iron, that would be the next level. I've never gotten to fly up close to the flat iron, which is that secondary peak over to the left. Normally by the time you get past the first ledge, it's starting to get bumpy, and then anything higher than that is like really bad. But I'm, uh, I have hope that tonight is our night. trying to think of things I can blabber on about as we do this long cross-country part and then once we get to the cliffs I'll be more engaged in the actual flight but freaking Casper the mattress company I'm very upset with it's been a month and two weeks I ordered three bed frames um, and this one for my master bedroom I've been looking at for like a long time because it's like 
I've always had just a shitty like metal bed frame and I'm like if I ever get like a nice house where I want to settle down for a while this is the bed frame I want and I finally ordered it it's not cheap and it said it was in stock it could ship one to two days or whatever and it's been a month and a half and Casper's literally just jerking me around saying uh, they don't know where it is certain pieces have been delivered and certain pieces have not their shipping provider uh, they had a service interruption with the shipping provider doesn't know what's going on it's just been a pain in the ass and I just want my damn bed frame I ordered the mattresses uh, from Costco because they were slightly discounted so I just have these mattresses no bed frames and it's a real bummer but that's like the most first world problem someone could have. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not actually a problem, it's just annoying. I'm interested in Robbie's approach here. He's going high and uh, deep. Kinda wanted to fly along this stuff. But we'll see what he does. This climb is burning a lot of gas. It's just in the back of my mind. Like, I know we're going to be fine. I know we'll make it. But, uh... I'm self-conscious of my fuel burn now that I have a hole, a literal hole in my tank. God damn it. It's so dumb. Casey gets over here, I don't know if they're just going to be satisfied with this terrain. This is literally her fifth paramotor flight, uh, or if she's going to want to come all the way over here with us, but either way, her mind's going to be blown. She's a skydiver, uh, I think she has like a couple thousand skydives now, and she was the most recent Risky Biscuits School of Paramotoring graduate graduate. I made up a word. It's graduate, not graduate <laughs> I'm dumb. Okay, let's just uh, say hello to this little mountain peak here. See what's up. See if there's turbulence. So far, nothing. Absolutely. Oh, 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 oh. There it is. I'm sorry, mountain. I'm sorry. You don't want me to touch you there. It's okay, I understand. <laughs> I was a little too aggressive. Yeah, I guess the wind is coming from this way, which makes this cliff face okay? Question mark? Behind it, not okay. But we'll see. Casey, I don't see Bill. Oh, I think Bill turned around. I think Casey's lingering over there. I trust her judgment on flight number four. Okay, I'm just gonna start heading over to the flat iron. Um, I think right now we have a tailwind which means I should be able to at least fly on this side of the flat iron. But we'll hustle over there because that's what I really want. And I'm also noting that at, at altitude here, it feels like we have a tailwind, which will get us there quicker. Uh, so most likely on the return leg, I'm gonna fly out and down low populated area back to the LZ low so I burn less gas oh, Robbie's getting deep in there I can't tell which side he's on okay interesting he's 
on the close side of that beacon. He seems to be doing okay. I'm more interested in the flat iron because I've never gotten to actually fly close to it. so it'd probably be really hard to see her. I've also lost sight of Robbie. Oh, oh there he is. His wing camouflages so well. This is where it's like, when you're flying with friends, it's good to keep tabs on them. But sometimes it's, unless you're really sticking together, it's very difficult to actually know where everyone is at every moment. And then it's like a broad spectrum of, you just want to assume the worst, but also they're probably fine. side iPhone has that new SOS feature which I have heard first-hand reports that it works pretty well this is a cool picture The winds are definitely uh, stronger up here at altitude. I can feel it, but I'm not uh, behind anything that's making it turbulent. So just got to respect the mountain. She will humble you very quickly. That's the flat iron right there, and I think we're gonna get it. There's Robbie. Cool. He's right on my tail. Good man. A little check. Okay, right now I have a tailwind pushing me at the mountain. So as long as I stay on this side of the mountain, I should be fine. Look at those rocks, they look like potatoes. So unique out here. Wow, I've never seen this side of the flat iron in the mountain. <laughs> this is gnarly. I don't know exactly what the prominence of flat iron is, but I think it's like 2,000 feet or in the 2000s. Staying kind of far away. As we feel it out, give myself some room before we get closer. I sniff the ass, just sniffle it. It's almost comforting to be talking to the camera, even though like you guys aren't going to be able to help me if something goes wrong. I do feel more comfortable. Dude, that's so sick. It is literally a flat iron. I've hiked up here once, 
forever ago in a video. Oh shit! I see a climbing rope or something up there. It's awfully cool. Fuck yeah. We're doing it! And I'm glad I'm capturing it on GoPro. Because honestly, one day when I'm old, hopefully I'll sit down and watch some of this shit and relive it. conservative still but I want to get lower like on this ledge look how perfect this thing is oh yeah I can see uh, some of the lightweight bushes are definitely blowing up there and that's why you need to respect it because even though it's calm and smooth on this well not calm but it's smooth on this side. It is not going to be on the other side. What would make me really happy though is if I could get a cool ass picture. Of the flat iron. It's honestly like a rare thing to be able to get up here that like I want to have that photo. It's like a NFT. It's like proof I was here. motorist down there. Um, I think that was the guy, a random trick guy showed up. And I never got his name or anything. He just took off. with that uh, flat iron mission. Now what I want to do is drop down to this lower level down here. Um, typically, like the wind gradient makes it so that it's calmer down low than way the hell up there. So it'd be cool if we could uh, get around some spires. I wonder if anyone's base jumping tonight. That other paramotor guy. I don't see Robbie. Then 
again, Robbie's very hard to see. I'm sure he's fine. Uh, why am I like adjusted? Still a little chunky down here. I wish it wasn't. I still feel the uh, push from this wind. Yeah, what I really want to do is fly back here in these spires, but I'm not getting a good vibe. Bad vibes. It's a little bit rocky. Really not too bad though, like but I'm just scared. Interestingly, it's worse down here. This <laughs> is like the situation last night. I mean, it's very possible that the same thing is happening. There's a flag on one of the houses down here. Let me see if I can locate it. The flag on the ground's not moving, but last night it was like the flag on the ground was not moving at all. Or, uh, I'm sorry, it was the opposite. The flag on the ground was pegged. The air up top was dead calm. I'm sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> formulate sentences while I'm paying acute attention to my surroundings. I'm going to slowly work around this way and just see how the air is. I'm scared because this should be the downwind side of this stuff. So far, so good. so far, like, just mild bumps, from what I can tell. Let's go back a little bit here, we'll feel this out. Oh yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. It's just so scary, you never know. So I'm gonna take the next one a little bit deeper. Dude, what the fuck? This is insane. Okay, watch this. 
This is the clip of the century. It's so scary coming back here because if something happens, the way out is treacherous. Holy fuck. So I flown my base canopy through there, but I've never flown a paramotor through there. God damn. These rocks are so intimidating. Let's go through here. Get nice and deep. Ooh, baby! The superstitions deliver! Oh, that's insane. Thank you, Mountain. Thank you for treating me nicely. <laughs> I'm gonna start heading that way. While we're out here in the open. God, dude, that was insane. It is 6.04. Um, I have, I don't know how much gas. I can't read numbers through my phone, but I have like half a tank, so I should be good still. Oh, dude! That was insane! We got two for one. The flat iron and the Super Bowl. Jesus! It's so gnarly, like... I don't know if it comes through in the GoPro, but that shit I just did in uh, the Super Bowl, going between those pillars... The thing is, like, worst case scenario is... If I miscalculated the wind and I hit turbulence and took a collapse, God, I hate even saying it out loud, or ran out of gas and hit the cliff, these rocks are so jagged and I would literally just like pitball, there's no way out. Like if something happened at the wrong time, I'd be so screwed. I'd just be like pitballing down jagged rocks end up crushed at the bottom and that is like my worst fear in all of existence like spiders fuck spiders i hate them nasty creatures public speaking drowning swimming those all suck maybe drowning would be about the same level as bouncing down a rock face all of it is no good very scary <laughs> but we just did it Holy shit. I'm gonna say more than likely, Casey and Bell turned back at the first cliff. I bet Robbie turned back around here whenever I last saw him. Um, I bet I'm gonna get back kinda late and everyone's gonna be wondering if I'm okay. Which I can text them, but or they can text me. I just these. Let's go, Jesus! Oh, I am sorry, headphone users. Probably just blew out your ears. Woo! A pair of motoring. <laughs> Thank you, Mel so kind to me. God, I sound like a a hippie tree hugger. Which, like, no offense if you're like that, but it's not really my style. I, sometimes I find it a little bit annoying. But I sound like one of those people. But really, I'm just expressing gratitude that that was just possible. Like, that's such a rare thing. And I'm trying to exercise uh, gratitude more just in life. 
Now I'm really sniffling. I'm sorry. It's probably really annoying. I would be annoyed if I was listening to someone sniffle while talk, talking. But, um, yeah. Robbie and I were joking about it. Like, not in like a hippie sense, but like when you're flying by these mountains, like I did before, when I made that first approach, I was like, ah, sorry, mountain. I didn't mean to touch you there. Like, that's what it feels like. Like, you need to respect the shit out of the mountain and apologize when you do wrong and thank it when it allows you to go in its crevices if you know what I'm saying. Literally. Fun freaking times. And my calf hurts. Slammed her right there. This Mad Max is uh, larger than standard. That's why it's called the Max. But I've obviously noticed in the beginning I had more of a tendency to be able to hit my uh, ankle or my heel or whatever on the cage. And normally it's not a problem, but just because I did that downwind and I was running like a gazelle, I smacked my calf. <laughs> As I was doing all that is when I got a text message that it was someone that wanted to look at my DRZ motorcycle and hopefully potentially buy it. God, I wish I could blow my nose. I should fly with a little Kleenex packet. I'm going to take it nice and chill. All the way back home. Maybe we'll fly low when we get closer, but flying low out here is another thing. You got to calculate your risks. I do it sometimes, probably, some might say often, but flying low over this terrain, like there's so many cacti and everything is prickly and wants to hurt you. And if you have a motor out, I trust myself to not miscalculate flying low, but if you have a motor out, you ball it up into a cactus, that's going to be a bad day. I promise if it ever happens to me and it's on GoPro, I'm posting it so you guys can observe my misery. At least uh, I'm thinking about my fuel tank issue. When I got this uh, Mad Max Parajet, uh, sent it over for the review and uh, they sent the large tank. There's a 17 liter. I think this is a 12. I have the 17 liter back in my house. So, it's no big deal. I'll swap the tank and I can keep flying. Ugh, sniffles. Nice, chill, cross-country flight home. I'm not even gonna trim out. I could, I have the gas. Uh, to burn and fly faster and get there sooner, but I'm kind of just like the chill vibe of uh, sitting here. After that insane visual of those rocks just coming at you. Uh, I was just going to say something. Now I forgot. Oh! If you guys want like a, uh, a super sneak preview of this. I doubt like many people will actually see this video. And not many people will sit through it till this timestamp, but throttles to me are a very important part of paramotoring because it's in your hand all the time, obviously. And uh, all the stock throttles, Viterazi and Parajet, they all suck, in my opinion. I think the ergonomics are garbage. Damn, I would love to have that house. That's sick. Um, yeah, the ergonomics are garbage. I used to have a favorite, which was made by a brand uh, that they're kind of assholes and they stopped selling them as accessories. But that was my all-time favorite throttle. And uh, since I can't get those anymore, my new all-time all -time favorite throttle is this off-grid aviation throttle, which uh, is cruise control. So I'll show you the cruise control. You just push this little thing into 
until it locks in and then it's adjustable with this little knob. Super sick and then you just bump the throttle and the cruise control's off. Aside from that, the ergonomics are great. Now personally, this is my current favorite throttle. You can get them on my web store. Um, people buy a lot of them and I highly recommend them. They're good quality, they just work really well. But, I'm a weird person. I am very minimalist and uh, the cruise control is great if you're flying a long ass cross country, but I rarely do that. I rarely use the feature of the cruise control. So ever since I got one of these and ever since they came out, I wanted one without cruise control just because I'm minimalist and I want like a more slim, less bulk, less weight. That's really the thing is like in your hand, it feels a little bit heavy. Not anything that would ever prevent me from using it. Like I said, currently it's my favorite throttle, but where I'm getting at is the guy who designs these uh, just sent me one that's a prototype of a new version that is minimalist, has no cruise control. It's literally the same footprint. Just remove all the uh, fancy internals that make the cruise control work. So benefit is lightweight minimalist, which makes me happy, and also lower price point. Um, I think these are like 220 or 230 or something, which worth every penny. Uh, but it's going to be nice to have a cheaper version um, and an option. Like literally best throttle ever. Pick if you want cruise control or not, and you're set. So I'm going to install it. I'll probably install it on this motor because I fly this motor the most just to test it and see how I like it. And uh, I think he's trying to release them in April, last I heard. And I want to make a YouTube video for the main channel talking about it. Touted as my new favorite, world's best pair of motor throttle. Really, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm just uh, giving a sales pitch, but genuinely, throttles are so important to me. Um, if I had to fly with a Viterazzi throttle the rest of my life, I would be really sad. And this throttle ergonomics are so good. And it's quality. Like some of, uh, there's other throttles that have good ergonomics, like good finger placement. But they're made from like bicycle parts and literally like uh, heat shrink is the only thing holding it together. And there's so much danger in your uh, throttle linkage getting pinned to full. So many people get chopped up by propellers, uh, either from ground starting or uh, stuck throttles or things like that. So if you're running a throttle that relies on heat shrink tubing and uh, super glue to <laughs> keep it in place, it sounds a little scary to me, but these things, from this end to the end that connects to the motor are super good quality. I like them. That wasn't supposed to be a sales pitch at all. That was just like, I'm excited about this throttle. And I'm sitting here over the desert flying in a straight line and I have nothing to talk about. So that's something to talk about. Let's do a time check. We should be right at sunset. 616, yeah. Pretty sure sunset was like 620. I still have plenty of gas, but I'm going to spin around and engage my strobe, which I just literally uh, changed the position of my strobe. One, to make it more visible and also to put it in a better spot that I could uh, reach so I can engage it at sunset in situations like this. I mentioned it in the uh, Pikachu Peak video, but I helped Casey. I don't. I don't even want to say I taught her how to fly, but like we did the same thing I did with my buddy Jake in that video titled uh, "I Taught My Friend to Paramotor in Two Hours" or whatever. And I did the same thing with Casey. She's a very experienced skydiver, so I spent like literally two hours with her, showing her the basics and. There's a helicopter. I think it's a helicopter over there. Um, he's low as shit, though. 
Anyway, squirrel brain. Um, when I taught Casey, I swapped my other Maverick frame. Uh, it normally has a booster on it, which is like kind of what I'm flying. I swapped it to an Adam 80 because she's uh, lighter. So I wonder if that's a medevac. I'm going to pay attention to that because there's police lights. There's a chance it might be medevac. Uh, but anyway, off topic. Multitasking in my brain. I swapped it to the Adam 80 for her. Matt was borrowing that motor with the Boaster. Both of them are in town, so they've been um, sharing that motor, essentially. And Matt got to fly Pikachu Peak last night, so he said uh, Casey could fly the motor out to the mountain. I'm wondering if she went back early, if Matt got set up and got another flight in. paramotorists out here. I see no paramotorists out here. But maybe he's close to the LZ. I'm kind of guessing where the LZ is. Because when you're navigating back to somewhere that you started in the middle of the desert, there's no reference point. But whatever this white area over here is, I know it's just to the right of that. So I'm just kind of flying this direction. We'll see what happens when we get over there. Lovely, lovely flight though. You guys better share this episode. If you're watching till this point and you don't share it, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> that sounded very aggressive. Oh, I saw this thing the other day. Can someone tell me what this is off the shitty GoPro footage? It's just like a little paved thing of the desert. My only guess is like uh, there's cattle out here. Maybe it was some sort of water trough. Maybe it was some sort of ancient structure. I don't know. Come to think of it, there are cattle out here. I wonder where they drink because this is just a wash. There's no water in it. And you haven't seen any troughs. There's one up there. That's a good question. How are these farmers keeping their uh, cattle hydrated? Do they truck water out and put it in a trough? Or am I just missing a stream where they drink from? Important questions. Dude, I would hate to be a cow, a black cow in Arizona in the summer. That would suck. That's another question for a farmer. These cows that are just free range out here in the desert, do they bring them inside in the summer and put them in shade? Or do they just sit out here? I bet their fur would be like super hot. But I mean, cows that like, all animals came from the wild some point, even though if they're domesticated to be used for meat or whatever, they came from the wild, so they got to know, they, they got to figure it out somehow. They'll be alright. Should we go swoop that cop? He would either appreciate it, because he's just sitting out there working a construction zone, or he would get pissed. I say we probably shouldn't do it. So the last time I saw any of my friends was before we got to the lower level. So I'm hoping I get back here and they're all chilling on the ground, high-fiving at how epic their flights were. Or they're on their way back and I just missed them. I just hope they're not on a rescue mission. It's that broad spectrum. Assuming the worst, but in reality, they're probably high-fiving and having a great time right now. This was the most chill, hands-off, mellow return trip ever. Hopefully it was somewhat entertaining with my 
to babble. Literally not a hint of wind movement or turbulence out here. I bet there is some wind movement if you looked at like a wind sock, but Okay, cool. So, where is she? No, I think I see Robbie's strobe, but... She, uh, is she in the air, or no one knows? Okay. Is Robbie with Casey, then? Is Robbie near Casey? Okay, so no one knows where Casey is? Oh, so she is in the air. Oh, I see her. I will go intercept her. Yeah, I see. Okay. <laughs> I just talked to Matt. Bluetooth. Okay, so here's the situation. Robbie's over there with his strobe, and uh, Casey's over here. And uh, I guess Casey couldn't find the LZ. <laughs> so I've got plenty of gas. I'm going to go intercept her. I got scared there for a second. I saw uh, only one paramotor, Bell's paramotor, on the ground, and uh, Matt and uh, or Bell on the phone, and I was like, "Oh God, someone went down!" But everyone's here; they're in the air. Barely see Robbie. I don't think Casey sees me yet. I'm going to perform an intercept maneuver to bring her home. I think she's following Robbie. She's not really going right heading.
heading now, and I just accidentally dumped my right trimmer. Like an idiot. Strobe gang to the rescue. <laughs> I wonder what the actual story is. Matt made it sound like uh, she couldn't find her way back home, but I don't know. She's been up for a really long time to not be able to find this spot. It is kind of hard, like I was saying, though, to find it. If you're low, uh, there's no way to spot it. You have to go high and kind of know relatively what to look for. This police car is a good reference, though. He was there when we drove in and then when we flew out, and he's still there, so. Ah, I just keep looking right at my strobe. <laughs> I want to make sure it was clearly visible from behind, so she can obviously see both of us. motoring in the Arizona desert I am honestly loving it out here so far but it's uh, the end of February and it's like 70s during the day um, it'll drop down to like 40s at night which is like perfect weather but it's only February and I know it's gonna get stupid hot and I'm not gonna lie I'm a little bit worried for those months I've been saying I kind of want to stick it out through the whole summer and experience uh, the first summer in the Phoenix area. Um, but my thing is, if it gets too hot, I just go north. I go to Idaho and Pacific Northwest, which I haven't ever really explored much of. And, uh, yeah. Time to land. Casey's got a lot of altitude to drop. Robbie's swooping it in like an absolute menace that he is. Just swooping in. How was your flight good, sir? <laughs> Amazing. Got all up in the Super Bowl. Did you? It was terrifying. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I got to the, the other Super side good. There and was flying around. Everything was fine and smooth, and then I just got oh, whacked for a Nice. Yep. And uh, I was like, all right, I overstayed my welcome. 
<laughs> it was almost worse down low than up high, kind of like last night. Yeah, I saw you down there, but I wasn't going to go down there. Yeah. Then I would have to climb again, so <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> well, maybe it's calmer down well, she there. Got her head down. Yeah, that was a good go around. Just looking a little lower this time. She got a nice large target. Good choice, more altitude. So what you you guys went into the bowl? Super Bowl and uh flew past Flatiron. Oh that's cool. How was it? Awesome. Woo! Beautiful. Hell yeah. I'm glad to hear she didn't land out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she sounds very excited. She found 